So there are a number of issues for us to deal with, starting from maritime security, capacity building, the issue of human element in shipping, the issue of environment, the issue of uh, unregulated uh, fishing. There are a lot of pillage going on with the fishing industry. You have a lot of Asians come to African seas, just fish and get away. Then we're also trying to institutionalize African Day of Seas and Ocean to draw the attention of Africans to the importance of sea and ocean. If you notice, all great maritime nations are great trading nations. So how come we're endowed with so much maritime assets in terms of natural endowment? Mr. Peter, yes, Peter, our nations just come in are here. not I need to, great. I need to. Our nations are not prospering. Mr. Peter, Mr. Peter said, I need for us to clear this, this point. The only reason why investments will come to your shores is if they know that they can uh, have adequate security. In recent times, uh, most of the uh, military that uh, parade the waterways, including the Navy and NSCDC and, and the NASA and the rest of other agencies, uh, have actually tried their best to ensure protection of investments and investors. But then it still seems as if the maritime industry is not getting up to what it should get. You talked about floating a national line, and that's what the federal government has, has is, you know, is trying to, is hoping to achieve. But why float a national line when you can't even allow the private sector to play in the maritime industry the way that they should? Mr. Peter Side, can you hear me? Mr. Peter Side, we're talking up. You Hello. talked about securing the waterways, and you talked about bringing investment into the country. Now, also in the same breath, you talked about floating a national shipping line, which the federal government has talked about in times past. But at this time, is floating a national shipping line the priority? Should it, should it be the priority of this administration, or trying to encourage more private sector participation? in the maritime industry? It is a priority. Now, I need to distinguish what's going on. Um, we are floating a national fleet, not necessarily a national line. A national line is one owned by government. It was done in the late 70s and the early 80s. What we are doing, what government is doing, is not to float a national line. It's to bring together a group of private investors to set up a big shipping organization or shipping firm that will be able to take our cargo. We currently do not have any Nigerian flag vessel taking our cargo from Nigeria, and that's unacceptable. We generate a lot of cargo, even basically look at the issue of crude oil and gas. We, of course, we're major, we're the sixth largest oil and gas producing nation in the world. And um, we are about the biggest in Africa until this rivalry from Angola or this competition from Angola. Yet, all our cargo is being taken by foreign flag vessels. And it comes with a lot of benefits when we take our cargo. Is it the area of employment generation? Is it the issue of ancillary services, insurance, entire gamut? of uh, shipping. Shipping, of course, uh, you have maritime lawyers who work if we have our own flag vessels. You have a lot of Nigerians who will be on board. The vessel will provide training opportunity. There will be a lot of wealth creation. And so what government is doing is to bring private investors to set up a firm, and government gives them incentives. And so we line out a number of incentives. If private sectors, private sector people can set up their vessels, take our cargo, we generate also non oil and gas cargo, there's been an appreciable uh, improvement in terms of uh, agricultural products and raw materials that is taken to Europe and America. So that's what we are looking at, not asking government to use government funds to set up a shipping line. So we're not talking about a national shipping line, we're talking about a national fleet. For us, it's actually important if you look at the network of benefits that we will get Talking about benefits now, we know that government in the West uh, has uh, deliberate policies uh, to support their maritime sector. Can African maritime administrators get the African government as well to support the growth of players in the sector? Well, clearly, the, the heads of government in Africa are already leading the way. Uh, under the banner of African Union, I just mentioned a special summit 
of uh, African heads of government that took place in Lometogo on the 15th of October last year, where they met and said everything necessary will be put in place to make maritime the key driver of economic growth in the continent of Africa because of our natural endowments. They laid out a charter, and in the charter, um, it, it encapsulates a number of issues. What do we do in the area of maritime security? There is the need for intra-Africa partnership to stem uh, the issue of maritime security. What do we do to ensure safety of vessels calling at our ports or within the African maritime domain? What do we do to get maritime to contribute more to development? Because, of course, there is a correlationship between trade and economic prosperity. Trading nations are usually very prosperous nations. Nations that produce goods and sell, make money, their quality of living is usually better than nations who produce nothing, that produce nothing. And so African leaders are already taking the lead. And we as maritime administrators and regulators are the ones to operationalize decisions made by our heads of government. So we're meeting to look at some of those charter resolutions, decisions they made and see how do we bring into effect these decisions, this vision of our leaders. Our leaders believe that by 2060, 2063, the agenda 2063, Africa should be prosperous, Africa should be a respectable voice globally, Africa should improve its market share from 5% to at least 20%. Africa must, of course, begin to... Uh, take our cargo and, of course, uh, bring in cargo, not just that the foreigners would dominate our maritime space. How do we bring that to come to pass? And part of it is to look at a basket of incentives. What are the things that we need to provide All that right. will encourage, motivate people to invest in the sector, for people to be interested in the sector? We even need to raise awareness about the sector. Many Africans don't know that the sea and ocean is indeed an asset. People it just is see indeed it as a place for uh, but Mr. Peter Sai, that's let, let's answer uh, let's anchor the the conversation here. But thank you so much for coming on the program today, and congratulations to you on being uh, the host of this year's Maritime 2017 conference. Dakuku Peter Sai is the director general of Nimasa. Well, business morning continues in just a moment, and we'll be talking to Chukuma Anyawo on the markets. Stay with us.